about that. Don Horvath is the veteran flag man on the flag stand. Into the corner they go, into turn number three. Off the corner. Powering down into turn number one. Now, keep an eye on 15-year-old Tyler Barry. He is in that number 21. In the third spot, comes to us from the NASCAR Wheel and Modify Tour. That is the number 25 and behind the wheel Matt Swanson behind the wheel of the number 25 race leader in that number 27 doing a fine job here Ruby and here comes Swanson right behind him car number 25 New Hampshire Brian Roby is running in the number four position then it's Tyler Barry and we are already going halfway good battle going on side by side in the turn number one between Kurt Vigent He's on the inside in car number seven. 12 lap heat races for the MRS. Derek Roby's doing a nice job keeping the second place competitor at bay. Round pounding modifieds. Delighted to be here tonight as we uh, present a 100 lap feature race. Two more trips around the 3 8 mile oval. And the white flag is quickly on the speedway. Here they come off the number four corner. Matt Swanson. Looks like he wants the top spot. However, he's going to have to work for it going into turn number three. Side by side, nerf bar to nerf bar as they come to the checkers. Down the straightaway, Swanson nails it. Very competitive race. Gary Byington is in the 30. Blast down that back straightaway. And right at the outset here, we got a competitive race coming through the field. Andy Shaw is in the number 60. As I noted, they felt very good about that car and the way it was running during the practice sessions earlier this afternoon. Shaw continues to be the pace setter. Out of the turn, Bolton's in third spot. Comes right up behind Perry. A little touch over there in between three and four. No harm done. Well, we got one going around in turn number two. That's a good looking formation coming around turn number four. Don Horvath turns them loose. Power down into turn number one. Out of the corner, Donnie Lashua comes alive on the outside off turn number two. Chris Bolton looking strong at a 63. He's currently in the third spot.
the sound of those modifieds just bounces off the backstretch wall. Lashwell working over the third place car. Trying to get that number three spot. Down the chute they go in the turn number three. Here they come off the corner. The team cars are going at it, Nerf Bar to Nerf Bar. Perry and Lashua, cars owned and prepared by series founder Jack Bateman. Nose to tail down that back straightaway. Don Horvath prepping to show some flag action. And here it comes. Andy Shaw flexing his muscles early on here this afternoon. KDW Landscaped. Doing a nice job. Chris Bolton, the checkered flag. Here we are. And this one's in the books. Two, one. All right, you ready? Here we go. Three, two. Gentlemen, start your engines. Field comes alive, rolling away on turn to number one. Nothing like the sound of that raw horsepower that comes from the modified division. We are delighted to be back here as we said at the outset. It's been a few years, a guy named Les Hinckley rolled into victory lane here when we were here back a few. We're up against a rain date that night. Donnie Horvath, longtime veteran flag man on the flag stand. Donnie announced a few weeks ago that this is going to be it at the end of the season. Over 30 years, he's been crawling up the stairway of a flag stand with the Isma Super Modifieds, with the Bush Grand National cars. Regular uh, driver at Lee USA Speedway, a uh, flagman, I'm sorry, and uh, he's had quite a run. Regarded as one of the better flagmen in New Hampshire. The car that sits on the pole is very, very victorious. Countless drivers have gotten behind the wheel of Gary Casala's Modifieds. And those drivers have won races. Here, there, and everywhere. Could be here tonight, but he will be tough in that number 25. Matt Swanson has been to victory lane for Gary Casala in the past. Casella is one of the original competitors with the Modified Racing Series when it started 18 years ago. Gary was the driver himself. KDW Landscaping, number 60 on the outside. Flying. 
Modified Racing Series presented by Milton Cat. Here as they come off the number four corner, goes to tail down into the turn. Shaw settled very nicely in behind the number 25. Derek Roby situated in the third spot. He's another one that really took to this racetrack today and running very, very well during practice. Chris Bolton in the number four position. Car number 63. And Brian Roby, no relation to the guy that's in the third spot, is in the number five position. You'll see the field go nose to tail over a good part of the early stages of this race. When they get to that 50 lap mark is when you'll see things get very, very interesting. Kurt Vigen going in high and hard in the turn number one. He comes right up behind the number 63. He says, hello, how are ya? Vigent right now, that's the hottest uh, battle going on on the speedway, and it's nose to tail, the 63 and the 7. Now Vigent's going to go on the outside off two, and he powers by Chris Bolton. Vigent on the move. Vigent out of Oxford, Massachusetts. Right up behind the Bellingham, Massachusetts driver. Ruby, your top four on nose to tail. On the back straightaway. Fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. Nose to tail coming off the number four turn. Vigent looks like he wants to go after the uh, 27 mass, Derek Roby. He thought better of it going down the back straightaway. Brian Roby is on the move now. The Boucher Acoustics, number 25, New Hampshire. The Sunapee driver is right there, right behind the 63. They are turning some very fast times out there. Keep an eye on car number 21. As we noted earlier, 15 years old. Tyler Berry. Roby off of turn number two. Races right up behind Bolton. Might be something developing there in that particular battle for the number four spot.
Look at the number 27 MA running third. Looks like we saw a puff of something. Hopefully it's nothing. But he's drawing the attention from the flag stand. And I think radio communications is discussing. Seventy-seven laps to go. Vacation land one hundred. Matt Swanson continues to be the pace setter as they come down the front straightaway. Yes, something's not right on the number twenty-seven and the black flag falls. Tough break for the kid from Bellingham, Massachusetts. So the complexion changes by position. Vigin is third, Bolton is fourth, Roby is in fifth spot. Tyler Berry is in the sixth position. Doucette is in seventh. Jacob Perry is in the eighth spot. And Kevin Iannarelli is currently in the ninth position. Tenth, George Sherman. So now, it is up to Shaw, see if he can reel in the leader. Those first two cars come down the front straightaway. Sounds like they're just coasting. Vigin still solid in the number seven car in third position. He is looking for his first ever win with this series. Sixty-seven laps remain. Getting closer and closer to the halfway mark. Passing flags displayed. Gary Byington out for a Saturday night cruise. The leaders out of turn number four. Inter interesting bit of uh, modified history. Roland Pennick drove successfully for Gary Casella. He has since moved on and gotten out of the racing game. Won a lot of features. One night, when there was a race at Loudoun for the Modified Tour, car owner Gary Casella reached out to one of the all-time greats to compete in his modified. 
and would not tell anybody who it was. Out of retirement at Waterford Speed Bowl, the place was electrified. Jerry Marquis, who was a marquee name in modified racing throughout his career. And it was the only time that he raced. He never came back again. Everybody wants to get in a Gary Casella car. It only happened because Pennick was tied up at Loudoun and couldn't get to New London in a good amount of time. Fifty six to go. Passing flag again shown to car 30. With 53 laps to go, and as you can see, it is still Swanson, Shaw, Vigent, Roby, and Barry. Talking with the legendary Art Barry today and his son Ken, they are very pleased with the progress that their, their boy, Tyler, is making in the modified end of the game. He runs in the SK lights down at Stafford Springs Motor Speedway. And you couldn't ask for two better coaches than his dad and his grandfather. His grandfather is in the state of Connecticut Hall of Fame and he's also in the New England Auto Racing Hall of Fame. I have to think that Josh Cantara would certainly have liked a better outing here today. He's out of Saco. It would give him some bragging rights in the state of Maine. Several weeks ago, we were at Beach Ridge Motor Speedway, and Tony Ricky took down the top honors. Kurt Vision has dramatically slowed in con number seven. He is on the bottom. Here comes Roby, right there. See if he can't wiggle his way by. Now you've got Swanson, a correction, Roby. Roby trying to get by the number seven, and here he goes. Yeah, like you said, John, here in the second half of the race, uh, guys starting to turn it up a little bit. You see a little more passing. And uh, that seven car all of a sudden has lost some speed over the last 10 laps or so. 
he did run hard at the outset. May have used him up a little bit more than he wanted to because the caution's not coming. One thing you mentioned to me uh, we noticed is the two leaders really aren't pushing their cars to the limit. They seem to be really easing them into the turns. Fans down on the fourth corner would not know what we're talking about. The leaders throughout the bulk of this race are letting off at the start finish line. No contact, that's not an issue. It's just that they are, for some reason or another, holding on. Holding on or saving it. So really looking like a two car race right now, but uh, give that 25 some open racetrack now and then looking to reel in the lead pair. Down the back straightaway, your leaders go to the outside as you would expect, coming through three and four and down the chute. But they still sound like they're coasting out here on the front straightaway. The amazing part is that Swanson missed the first two practices and half of the third practice. He's out for a nice, easy drive today, and Andy Shaw was laying down all the fast laps in practice today in that number 60. It's not really a practice, but it's happened so many times over the years that uh, Gary Casella, the owner, gets here when he gets here. One has to wonder if this could turn into a drag race between these two if they are there in the last three or four laps. Yeah, I got to wonder if Andy Shaw is just biding his time, keeping him within striking distance and ready to kind of turn it up and pressure him for the lead here in the final 25 laps. But no doubt, like you said earlier today, John, this track looks like it was made for modifieds. These guys really putting some good laps down and a lot of room to race here on Maine's fastest track. Matt Swanson cut his teeth in modified racing when it was a weekly division some 10 plus years ago, maybe even a little longer, at Star Speedway in Epping. One in the wall, 21. Car number 21 up against the concrete in turn number four. And the motors come alive. Now the scramble is on as they go down the back straightaway. Look at this going into the corner. Nip and tuck action off the turn. Swanson still holds on to the lead. Now you've got Perry on the bottom. He's racing hard with Shaw out of turn number two. And the 55 is on his way up. The 55 car. Hanging tough on the bottom out of turn number two. Running in the number five spot is Donnie Lashua. Vigin still on the speedway. Here goes Brian Roby on the outside and easily goes by the number seven.
char is he motoring kind of looks it I don't think he was turning as good as he wanted him to in the fourth turn settling right in behind car 55 Whoa, oh, he got into the car. Into the car he goes, and the caution is out. From his class at, here we go. Down the back straightaway, Jacob Perry. The team car is on the move. Car number 17, Donnie Lashua. How about the run here going into the third spot? Brian Ruby. Brian Ruby has developed into a very solid modified racer. He runs more than anybody. He puts one big schedule together every year. He's good buddies with Matt Hirschman, and often will help Hash, uh, sorry, H Hirschman out at events that they uh, technically get the caution out. the racing we go and they roar through one and two down the back straightaway now Roby's gonna try to set up shop downstairs can't get it done Perry keeps him at bay and all of a sudden the 25 car is uh, running harder down the front straightaway due to the late stages He's pulling away. Swanson is literally pulling away. Now Roby goes inside the 47 car for a side-by-side -side race off two. Nerf bar to Nerf bar. That's your race right now, fans. For the number two spot. Now, Roby's got his sight sets on the leader. Sixteen laps to cover, and this one is not over yet. If there is anything that Matt Hirschman has taught Brian Roby, it is tire maintenance. Uh, our track owner, Richard Jordan, with the help from one of our Hall of Fame drivers, Alan Moeller, actually starting up a senior modified division here, more like a, a club racing group, uh, basically for 55 and over, driving some uh, older retired SK modified. So getting idea. that off the ground. Yeah. This day and age, you got to do something to go forward. All right, here we go. As the field goes forward, down the front straightaway. Swanson and Ruby. Clear sailing ahead, working off of turn number four. Here comes Jacob Berry again. 
and Anthony Bello in the 12. He is in the fourth spot. Caution out again. Here we go. Now, look at this. Down the back straightaway, top three nose to tail. Side by side race for the number four spot. Shaw is on the move. He did exactly what we anticipated. As you pointed out, he was coming up through. And right now, he's doing what he can to get to that second place car. But he's going to have to get by Jacob Perry first. A car length separated the leaders down the back chute. Ten laps to go at the stripe. Ten to go. Roby's quick off. Will we see a crossover attempt? Perry is still in the third spot. Kevin Iannarelli is up to fourth. Yellow flag out. Bolton. Andy Shaw was up in the t up to fourth, but all of a sudden has dropped back into sixth for this restart. Green flag. Out of the corner, Iannarelli comes alive. Iannarelli is in that number three spot. Right there, car number 27, MA. Whoa, there goes Roby. Roby on the outside has taken over the lead. Roby takes over the lead with eight laps to go. Five laps to go, five more. Swanson may be settling for second spot. Iannarelli in third. Jacob Perry is currently fourth. Anthony Bello, fifth. Those are the top five. Caution's out again. Look at the bottom line. Car number 12, doing a great job. He right now is trying to wrestle that third position away from uh, Swanson. It's gonna be two laps to go. Two more to go when they come down the front straightaway.
One more lap. Ryan Roby is your winner. And closely behind him. Need a part or have an automotive related question? Your top three here. But well, we're going to start out with your race winner. Started mid-pack in this one and kind of bided his time through the first two-thirds of the race. And when it was go time, he was right there to grab the lead away and take the checkered flag. Got to get all that safety equipment undone and here he comes hopping out, folks. Give it up for Brian Roby, your winner. <laughs> Watch that last step behind you, buddy. It's a doozy. Brian, welcome to Wiscasset Speedway Victory Lane. How you feeling right now? Oh, this is a great welcome, I'd say. <laughs> no, this is unbelievable. We've, uh, this is our first tour type win. Um, we've been, you know, it's been a long time coming. We've had quite a few seconds, and uh, I finished that red car second more times than I'd like to count. So, uh, you know, having Matt there, I knew it was going to be really tough. I had to have the perfect restart, and just fortunately, I got it. And, uh, you know, we were able to pull away a little bit at the end. Kevin came on really strong, too. But, man, what a, what a place. It's a beautiful facility. You know, Richard and the Jordans, you know, and getting Canada. You know, I can't thank you guys enough. Thank you for the fans for coming out. Heck of a crowd here tonight. Beautiful track. It's, I'll love to come back here. This place is awesome. Now, uh, did those cautions, those late cautions, kind of play in for you a little bit? Uh, Mid-pack, like I said, for the first two-thirds of the race, but the car was there for you in the closing laps. Yeah, I thought I actually had uh, given it up there because we were up to fourth, but uh, I was kind of biding my time and trying to save a little bit, and the car was already freeing up. So we elected to pit out of fourth there and make a, a minor adjustment, and it was, it was just what it needed. Uh, the late race cautions, they really didn't affect the car all that bad, so... Uh, yeah, those weren't so bad. The, the middle caution there where we pitted, that, I'd say that was the key to winning this one. Who are we thanking on this win today for you? I uh, just got to thank the sponsors, um, Boucher Acoustic, RHR Construction, Andy Speed Shop, Maurice Enterprises, Smith Machine, and I got to thank the crew, everybody that came up here today, you know, and helped me out week to week. And like I said, thank you, MRS, for putting the show on. Thank you, Richard, for having us, and uh, thank you, fans, for coming out and supporting. Awesome. Once again, folks, nice round of applause. Brian Roby, your winner today at the Vacation Land 100. Kevin Iannarelli, welcome here. Uh, I know you're no stranger to Victory Lane. Turn around so the fans can see you here. You've done some laps in NEMA action. How's the modified feel out here? Quite a bit different. Uh, without the downforce of the wing, it's, uh, it's a different ride, but it's pretty challenging. Uh, the track's really rough and uh, made for an exciting race tonight. Yeah, and I know, uh, again, you were kind of mired mid-pack as well, and uh, it's a matter of get, getting your equipment here to the end. Those last uh, couple cautions certainly helped you as well. Yeah, we uh, freed up quite a bit at the uh, early stage of the race and decided to pit, um, and the crew guys, just, uh, they tightened it up pretty good, and we came through the field after that. Who are you thanking on this finish tonight? I'd like to take, thank iRacing.com. Um, without their support, I wouldn't be here. Lucas Oil, uh, Billy the Kid Engines, LFR Chassis, uh, the Vermont uh, Air National Guard, uh, and PFC Brakes. All right, once again, Kevin Iannarelli finishing in second today with the MRS Mods. And Matt Swanson, uh, Matt, I, I had a feeling you were going to be here, but uh, certainly not in this third position. What happened late in the race? Did it just go away from you? Ah, uh, there were a couple things that happened. We had a carburetor start to stumble up on us, and we were the only one that didn't pit in the top three. I mean, there's a lot of things that contribute to it, but... Uh, nonetheless, Gary Casella brought one hell of a race car, um, him, Charlie, and Stetson. Uh, this car actually raced at Stafford Motor Speedway last night, and they did not go to bed last night, so we could come up here. Um, Gary talked it over with me at about 12.30 last night. We got here just in time for the third round of practice, and, um, you know, to come out with a third place finish obviously isn't what we wanted, but, um, you know, We'll take it. First two-thirds of this race, uh, John and I were talking up in the booth. It sounded like you really weren't pushing this car at all, almost letting off at the start-finish line. Yeah, no, I really wasn't pushing it. Um, you know, I thought we were going to be in a real good spot at the end of the race there, and it was kind of like a light switch. It just, uh, 
you know, you could definitely tell a speed difference on flipped right side tires like the top two had compared to what we had. Um, but, you know, nonetheless, like I said, can't thank Gary Casella, uh, Charlie Stetson, uh, Gary's German Shepherd, Mia, of course, the famous German Shepherd. Uh, uh, Mully, who's not here with us today, Sean, who's not here, you know, just all the guys that work on this car in the shop. And, you know, also got to, uh, you know, extend a thank you to my BRE guys who are, you know, thrashing at the uh, race car shop today trying to get us ready for the tour race at, Loud uh, at Stafford next weekend. Um, you know, and my whole family couldn't be here today, but they're watching on speed51.com. My girlfriend, her whole family, uh, they're down at Musquamacut, Rhode Island, waiting for me to get there after we're done here and, uh, you know, have a couple vacation days. But um, got to thank Mike Pettit for the horsepower, uh, Casella snow plows, uh, Mully's auto repair, um, you know, just all the partners on this race car. Uh, without these guys, we couldn't get it done. And, uh, you know, got to thank all you guys, all you race fans. You guys are awesome. Uh, was cast at Speedway for having us, and hopefully we can come back soon. Awesome. Sounds good. Thank you. Matt Swanson coming home in the third spot. Kevin Iannarelli, your runner-up. And your winner in the number 25, Brian Roby, wins the Vacation Land 100 today. It was cast at Speedway.